This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, the freedom from hijab movement in Iran. With us this evening, Annie Cyrus, the coolest person walking the planet Earth as we speak. Annie, welcome to the program. Oh, it was a pleasure to be here. All right, but Annie is not just the coolest person on the planet. Annie is a human rights activist, founder and president of Live Up to Freedom and of AQ News. But I think most importantly, the producer of a very great show, right, Annie? Absolutely. The best show there is out there at the moment. <laughs> and, and what is the name of that show? The Glasov Gang. All right, all right. Annie, from the uh, moving from obviously something serious that we were discussing, but moving away from a little bit of humor for the moment to something deadly serious. I know you very well, Annie. We communicate daily. Your heart and soul is with the people of Iran every second of the day. They're protesting in the streets, streets, risking their lives, losing their lives. Women are taking off their hijab. And for all of this, they're being tortured and murdered and raped. Not a word from the establishment media. That's where you come in. Tell us about it. Well, um, the uprising, as we call it, the uprising in the Islamic Republic of Iran started back in December 27th, and it is still going on. Um, but obviously, the narrative the mainstream media is feeding people is that people are just so tired of being poor and living under the line of poverty. So they are marching on the street asking for better pay. That's a narrative that is being, you know, aired not even daily, once in a while they hit at it, they hint at it. But in reality, what happened is about March of 2017, women in Iran started a movement called White Wednesday. How it worked was every Wednesday they would wear either full white clothes or just a piece of white and they would come on the streets. And it was their um, opposition to a mandatory hijab being black under Sharia ruling of the country. So they would protest that by wearing a piece of white clothing or head to toe white. The morality police started arresting them for doing such a thing. And that ended up being where they got so frustrated, they suddenly started marching the streets and protesting against mandatory hijab altogether by starting to remove their hijab. And thankfully, a huge number of men also started backing them up and marching the streets with them. So this whole movement was not about not having money. It was about being sick and tired of being a second-class citizen under Sharia. Absolutely, Annie. And I've dedicated my life analyzing and trying to figure out this sick, morbid mind of the left. And let's just think of this picture for a minute. You've got women in Iran taking off their hijab, facing decades in prison and rape and murder. And you've got leftists on CNN and MSNBC talking about this. Oh yeah, the Iranian people have just had enough of the economic stagnation. Something is very wrong with this picture because it's obviously, a, what's happening is obviously about Islamic law and the rebellion against Islamic totalitarianism, but the media here wants to make it about something else. What do you think of that? Why? Well, the reason obviously is, I'm, I'm going to say this right here for the audience of the Glazov gang, I didn't even know why until I read a book not named United in Hate, written by Dr. Jamie Glazov. Send her the check immediately. Send her the check immediately. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, please overnight my check for that. But in all seriousness, if you read that book, as you mentioned, Jamie, on that book, as you perfectly explain it and break it down into understanding of someone like me, is that all the left wants to do is basically burn down America as we know it and build their delusional utopia on the ashes. Now, the best way for them to do it is to bring in anything that goes against our constitution. The number one thing that absolutely 
goes against everything we believe and value in America is Sharia. So they are, they've been pushing this agenda of Sharia in America for as much as they can. Now imagine what it would do to their narrative if they came out and say, millions and millions of people in Iran are against Sharia. They are fed up after 38 years of Islamic ruling and they are marching the street. That would destroy their narrative. So of course they're going to turn a blind eye. They will cover everything up to just force their own agenda. Absolutely, Annie. You know, when my family, my parents escaped from the Soviet Union, we were fighting against the KGB and the Soviet regime. And as the years passed in the West when we were around these leftists, it became very clear what side the left was really on in the Cold War. And Annie, it's very clear that the left and the establishment media is actually on the side of the persecutors of your people, of the Iranian people. And let me ask this, name me one Iranian exile, name me one Iranian dissident, even you, who has appeared on CNN and MSNBC to tell this side of the story? No, oh, obviously none of us. And the, 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 the funny part, or in my opinion, sad part, Jamie, is that I actually wrote a very short piece backed up by actual pictures taken from the streets of Islamic Republic of Iran, dated, and I submitted to every single mainstream media channel out there saying people are writing on the walls, death to dictator, death to Khamenei being the supreme leader of Islamic Republic of Iran. I had videos attached to those emails that people are chanting, we don't want Sharia, no to Sharia, equality for women, all of that, and never heard back, and none of those material was ever aired. As I said, they're not going to do it. They don't care. They are, as you said, they are going to side with evil. It doesn't matter how many innocent people are going to be killed, which as of right now, the confirmed number of killed people on the streets for protesting in Iran is 45 people. 45 innocent people killed, which two of them were 13-year-old boys. They shot them dead for marching the streets. Nobody's going to cover that here. The left just cannot touch that. Who cares for the people's life? Yeah, because it might make the Islamic Republic look bad, and then we might have to get to what's inspiring and sanctioning the Islamic Republic. But Annie... Let's not mention the fact that if they do tell the truth, that is when the Obama needs to explain himself for giving them the deal, giving them billions of dollars and opening the window of negotiation with them. That's a huge deal to explain. So let's just cover it up, let people die, let's not support them, let's not even give them a voice. So our perfect Obama administration wouldn't have any bad record on them. Absolutely, but look, even this Me Too movement, look, we're all on the side of anybody that's really been abused or harassed, it, it's a given. Any abused victims in any way, we're, we're on their side. However, I'm just interested in the degrees of selective indignation and, 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 and attention here. You know, we had Oprah giving her speech. I think it was, sometimes I mix up the terms Oscars or I think it was the Golden Globe Awards or whatever. But, you know, you know recently at those awards, uh, you know, Oprah's giving her big speech and it's connected also to that. And then this big, you know, all this, all this Me Too stuff going on, right? Why was I sitting there during those awards and I was thinking, what are the chances that Oprah's going to stand up for the women under Islamic gender apartheid throughout the world that have had acid thrown in their face, that have been killed because of quote unquote honor, that have been forced into child marriage, etc., etc. Annie, what is this shameless hypocrisy of this Me Too movement and all these feminists that won't say a word for truly, really suffering women under Islamic gender apartheid? Well, um, you know, the Me Too movement, when it started, yes, I agree. I did say any, any, any person anywhere, as you know, I'm a humanitarian, I go beyond borders. Any person, any human at any point in their life, if they are being, you know, oppressed, tortured, you know, assaulted, any, any harm towards them needs to be voiced. 
But things got really, really hard for me to understand when they took it to the next level and turned it into Me Too Muslim, where they started hashtagging Me Too Muslim for Muslim women who are facing oppression here in America and they're being abused and they're being called out and they're being uh, being attacked for wearing the hijab. That's where it got really, really personal for me that there are people out there, as you said, like Oprah, who are willing to use their power to promote and further the agenda of the symbol of oppression for women under Sharia, which is hijab, and back those women up and promote and normalize the hijab while my people are being arrested, put in prison, raped, lashed, some of them facing up to 10 years of prison time for not wanting to wear the hijab. Why do they do it? I, I go back to your book, the, the, the ill mentality of the left, the fact that the individuality shouldn't in fact exist. Oprah Winfrey cannot think for herself. She needs to follow the narrative. She needs to fit into the democratic mentality. Even if she knows what she's doing is wrong, she needs to stay within the narrative. She can't come out of it or she's going to lose the fortune, the fame. All of that is gone. No, absolutely. Look, it was just in the news today that Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg have put a full list of the killed and of the detainees up on their websites in Iran. That's a sad joke. They would never do that. Actually, no one is doing that, really, except a wonderful woman that I know by the name of Annie Cyrus. Your site, Live Up to Freedom, has put up a full list of the murdered Iranians, of the detainees that are in Iranian prisons right now. Thank you so much for doing, Annie. Tell us a bit about that and then comment again that Annie, you would think that the entire Western media, that all the feminists, that all the humanitarians, that this is what they would be doing, but only Annie Cyrus is doing this. And of course, there's some other people, of course. I just mean that who have we really heard of that's doing this, right? Annie, go ahead. Well, yes, we do on, on liveuptofreedom.com. We literally update it daily or as information comes to me. We have a full page that is naming every single person who was killed during this movement and also a list of everyone who has been arrested and put in prison. If we do have an update on their case, we put it. As of right now, we don't really have, none of them have been uh, sentenced, but we do have the list. And my reason for doing it, aside the fact that, well, I am an Iranian and I always think that um, Islamic Republic of Iran, as much as they try to say it is the most moderate Islamic country, it's to my knowledge and firsthand experience, it is one of the worst places to be born and raised in. So I put all these names out because I think it's my duty as a person, as a humanitarian and as, a, as an Iranian to give a voice to all of them. Those who were killed, they need to be heard. I, I can't stand here. I can't even understand how anyone with power of all of these celebrities and all these big shots and all these mainstream media people, how can they stand there and think that they can let someone as a human die in vain so they wouldn't lose their position? I can't even wrap my head around the idea. But again, I have given up on understanding the, the mentality of the left because I don't think they have mentality. They just don't. They just sold their soul to evil. And that's the bottom line when it comes to my understanding of the left. But I do it because I think it's my duty. And I think if there is someone out there who's wishing to do anything or at least just, just bring a memory to those who lost their life just because they wanted their basic human rights, so at least I can give them the tool to do so. And yes, we do update it again. LiveUpToFreedom.com is where not only we put the names, we have updates, we have links to other blogs that other Iranians are putting information out, videos and all that material. So hopefully somebody's going to at least remember these people. Thank you, Annie. Everybody go to LiveUpToFreedom.com because Annie's doing what the Western media should be doing, but they're not. Annie, we're obviously in complete agreement about the evil of the left since I was a kid when we came from the Soviet Union and I saw these leftist professors 
saying good things about Mao and I just knew immediately something was very wrong so I dedicated my life to fighting them and that's why we do what we do. Now Annie, that's the left but let me ask you something about the Islamic mindset. Now Narjis Husseini, she's that 32 year old courageous woman in Iran. She was arrested for ripping off her hijab recently. She's facing 10 years we know Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, they're not going to talk about her. But let me ask you something. There was just an update. She's been charged with inciting corruption and, you guessed it, prostitution. Let me ask you, what is the mindset of the Islamic Republic? Because you, you, know, you would think maybe they'll accuse her of drug dealing or being a spy. But it's very interesting that a person that takes off the hijab is a prostitute. Well, the mentality comes from what everything else comes from. The Quran, the Hadith, and the teaching of Islam. So, again, in Quran it mentions, tell a believing woman to cover their hair and so they be known and not to be abused, sexual abuse being that. And then Muhammad explains that if a Muslim woman shows her hair or her body she has committed adultery because by showing her hair or part of her body, she has seduced a Muslim man that would end up being him committing a sin. So as always, it's her fault. Now, when she removes her hijab, well, yes, obviously the crime of starting corruption is because when she started it, a lot of other women started doing the same thing. So she was the, you know, one who started the corruption. But as far as prostitution, she shows her hair to a lot of Muslim men in Islamic Republic of Iran. So based on words of Muhammad and words of Allah, she actually prostituted herself. She led Muslim men be seduced by her hair. Hmm, sounds like something that feminists would be against. Oops, oh, I forgot. We're being white supremacists and racists for being concerned about this. Annie, Linda Sarsour is so worried about the Muslim community. Hmm. As you pointed out to me the other day, the Iranians being murdered and tortured and detained in prisons, they're also Muslims. Where is Linda Sarsour's concern for the Muslim community of Iran? Oh wait, they're not the right Muslims? No, no, it's not about that. It's that, hey, there is no way Iranian women who are being tortured, raped, put in prison, lashed, arrested, or possibly some of them being killed, by their families for bringing shame, they can't afford to pay thousands of dollars to Linda. Linda does it for money, for the fancy luxurious life she gets in New York. Of course, she's not going to care for those women. And let's not forget, what they're doing is standing up to Sharia. Linda is all about Sharia. She said it publicly. She obeys Sharia and everybody else should obey Sharia. You, you remove your hijab, you didn't obey Sharia. She wears the hijab, remember? Oh, a little bit depressing talking about so many low lives this evening. Annie, let's end on this. I was, just in general, i just like to say that I'm very grateful to you, Annie. A lot of times, not just what you do, but even in our personal conversations, you remind me very much of the brave dissidents that have been around my family, my whole youth and childhood when I was growing up. And I was around so many brave people that cared about the suffering people in the world. And um, you always remind me of them. And I'd like to thank you for what's in your heart and how much you, you battle for these suffering people under the Islamic curtain. Let's end with the eight-year-old girl that you posted on your Facebook today, that very powerful image. Let's post that picture. Annie, let's end with this. Who is this eight-year-old girl and what is she doing? What an image. Uh, well, Jamie, this little brave girl, I actually called her my brave little sister. Um, she's an eight-year-old girl. At, at this point, for her safety and her family, we're not releasing her name, obviously, but she decided to join the movement. Uh, she decided to be brave. She decided to um, understand what other adult women are doing. Um, as audience can see, she is also holding her hijab. 
Uh, and for those of our audience who may not know, yes, in Islamic Republic of Iran, at age seven, when you start going to school, you start wearing the hijab. And then at age nine, it becomes mandatory hijab. But in a school, it's mandatory after age seven. And um, she, she obviously knows she is a year away from being an adult woman. So she's she's playing her part as heartbreaking as it is. And, and it kind of reminds me of me being there Jamie, I, 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 when I saw the picture, the first thing that came to my mind is what she's going to go through in her life, living in that country. So uh, it's something in me wanted to reach through the monitor and just give her a hug and tell her it's going to be okay because we are not many, but we are still here. We're still trying. And I pray for her and every other little girl that is in her shoes and living in any Islamic country or society or family, that one day, somehow, magically, people will wake up and realize that a little girl can be treated as a woman, as an adult, sexually, mentally, physically, as far as crime goes and punishment goes. And, and we all need to do something about it. It's, it's great to know how brave she is. It absolutely makes me smile, but at the same time, knowing what she could possibly endure in her life just breaks my heart to know that not enough of us are screaming. Forget what she's talking about. We got to scream and be the voice they don't have. Absolutely, Annie. And thank you for um, pointing out and, and, and sharing that powerful image and our love and our concern goes out to that eight-year-old girl and uh, we pray every moment in terms of what she may endure but Annie how how just how grotesque and disgusting in terms of the silence of the media in terms of even that that picture of that eight-year-old girl and what she symbolizes Annie all good things must come to an end especially including a conversation with the one and only Annie Cyrus. Remind our audience where they need to go to stay informed on all of this. You can go to liveuptofreedom.com and get daily updates on everything that's going on. And maybe a final sentence of wisdom from the one and only Annie Cyrus. Next time, any of the major magazines print Linda Sarsour's picture on the front page of their cover magazine, calling her one of the bravest leaders. Make sure to submit a picture of the eight-year-old girl and ask them to replace her picture with that bra brave little girl who's standing up for something that means real life. Wow. Annie, thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Everybody go to liveuptofreedom.com. Also remember the Glazoff Gang is a fan-generated program. We're only here because of you. If you like us and support what we do, please go to jamieglazoff.com to support the show and at least be subscribed to the YouTube channel of the Glazoff Gang. Click that little bell on the right-hand side. You'll get instant updates and tell everybody to be a subscriber. We'll see you soon. Good night.